Are you ready to live for a thousand years? A little injection first. So let's talk first about what you'd have to offer mankind with this thousand year life. Nothing. Except for maybe 230 kilograms of skin, which your body continuously grows and could eventually cover one and a half football fields. And then there's all the hair you'd grow, the length of which will be equal to the height of 10 Statues of Liberty. This is perhaps about the best you could offer. But don't worry, there's another benefit. For the past 100 years, the average person's height has increased 8 centimeters, which is mostly explained by medical advances. So what if you continue growing for your whole life? By the end of the experiment, you'd be 80 meters tall. Well, now you really are a completely ridiculous creature. But no, even for you, Arnie, it's too much. Much of the complexity of longevity lies in the inability of organs to withstand the burdens of operating for more than 100 or 200 years. Your joints would eventually begin to break down under their own weight and stress. Fortunately, robotic organs will appear on the scene. There, that's better. But is it possible to replace all the various parts of a body? Unfortunately, no. There are limits with your brain, of course. Arnold's memory is capable of holding 2.5 petabytes of information. This is equivalent to the content of all the photos on Facebook, plus 20 million archive boxes packed full of documents. This may seem like a huge number, but eventually, in 300 years, your memory would be full. Since Arnie will become the oldest person on the planet, he'll soon be famous. But he won't be able to put two words together due to his full memory. So, your body really isn't intended for such a long life, Arnie. Do you know what the best thing you can do for humanity is? Wean them of yourself. You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my God, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected. It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly, but you will lag behind in progress and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Oh, Arnold, you came back just in time. The sun is dying and turning into a supernova, and you got the best seat to see the death of our solar system. Say goodbye to planet Earth. I guess that burrito was a mistake. Hmm? You've been teleported a lot during our science show, but did you ever wonder how the teleporter works? There are several ways to travel through time. Let's start with wormholes. Where have you been dreaming of going? To Australia? No problem, get in. A wormhole is a tunnel through the space-time continuum that theoretically could send you to any point in the universe in just a few seconds. But time is relative, Arnie, and it might take just a few seconds for you, but on Earth, decades could pass. Congratulations, Arnie. You're in Australia in the year 2050. It's a little uncomfortable, yeah? And what if you needed to move around at the same time? 
Quantum teleportation can help in this matter. Your body consists of a hundred trillion cells, which in turn consists of a hundred trillion atoms each. And each atom contains tiny pinpoint particles, quanta, which could help you teleport over huge distances. It would be great to find someone who could help you build a quantum teleporter. Well, look who's here. Rick and Morty. Arnie, take their drawings. With their help, you could create a device for instantaneous movement anywhere in the universe and even into alternate universes. Now, when the teleporter's ready, climb into the box and make sure there's no one else inside. Well, so long, Arnold. In quantum teleportation, the original body dies and a duplicate is created at the destination point. No big loss in your case. Wow! I told you, during teleport, you need to be alone inside the booth. Don't touch anything in the laboratory. What have you done? Your DNA, which was hybridized with that of a scorpion, was transmitted through the satellite system and turned all the inhabitants of the planet into human-scorpion hybrids. You've destroyed Dimension C-137, you stupid idiot, Arnie. Rick and Morty would have traveled back to the original universe, where the mutants don't exist, but you can only do it a couple of times. I don't think we want to see what happens to Arnie in this universe. Better we go back to Australia. Fortunately, I saved Arnold's quantum data, and therefore had have the ability to recover his useless body. This girl has contact lenses that connect to the internet. She can look up any information about you in just a few seconds. Here you will die as a virgin. Get inside. This space elevator will lift you up to an altitude of 35,000 kilometers above sea level, straight to a huge ring that turns the energy of the Earth's rotation into electricity. To your right is a human body part shop. Let's go inside and look for a replacement for your unfortunate finger. This doctor can recreate an entire organism from only the genome. So all the zoos here are teeming with dinosaurs, dodo birds, and even Neanderthals. You want a snack? 3D printers print food from artificial animal cells, synthesize flour and minerals, and it tastes better than food from 2019. What a wonderful world, right? But it all could turn out quite different. Different. Nuclear war, global warming, pandemics. This could also be our future. Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future. Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes. He needs your help. That's why you're going to the year 2050. Oh dear, that's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it! 
Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. Arnold, look out! A rocket! Arnold! Arnold! Are you okay? You've just traveled three billion years back in time. Only unicellular organisms live during this era. No pain, no humiliation. So, Arnold, you happy now? On second thought, to be honest, I'm worried for humankind if you should somehow become its founding father. Ah, uh, how's this for a change? Earth, 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive. Because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity. And that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just going to have to figure out how to survive on your own. Water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there, and you can take up farming. You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs, build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. It's time for the third button, Arnold. And you've still got two fingers left to press it. I believe in you, man. He's already packed his stuff, fed his fish, and is ready to go on a top secret journey. Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean. I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're going to shoot the explosion on it, and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter, or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here, fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! Everything that disappears here ends up in a parallel universe. Look, everything's a little different here. You look strange even to this dog. As you can see, your house has also changed a lot. I advise you to be careful there. Meet Arnold. This is Arnold, although from a parallel universe. He's much more successful than you and even sports a stylish mustache. And it looks like he doesn't like you at all. At the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle is the mythical city of Atlantis. Don't ask, because I have no idea why the ancient Atlanteans needed all these planes and ships. But ancient customs and traditions are harsh. Someone like you will be immediately turned into a slave. Or if you can't handle it, you'll be turned into fuel for steamboats. 
Careful, Arnold. New vehicles are arriving. There is another theory. Everything that happens in the Bermuda Triangle is due to aliens. And perhaps they're taking vehicles to study human technology or putting it in a museum. Just look at how much stuff they have in their exhibits. Since aliens are poorly versed in terrestrial life forms, you were placed with mushrooms. Don't be offended, Arnold. It could be because of your haircut. You won't be bored for long. They say aliens abduct people for a different purpose. You must get pregnant and carry their alien baby. Sorry, Arnold, but aliens are also bad at gender. What's going on? Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century, and we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black Ooh. magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often no, no, accused no, no, others of no, heresy no, no, no. in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm, I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day.
you're still alive. Okay. Lucky for us, Snot and Gob just so happened to steal this huge meat grinder yesterday. What are we waiting for? The meat grinder ain't gonna turn itself on. He seems to have lost his memory. More precisely, all his neural connections have been destroyed, and his mind is like a pure white sheet. In some way, we've killed him. And what shall we do with that now? I don't know, but it'll be something interesting. Uh... Wait a minute. Why would you want to kill an immortal? Uh -oh. Ah, you want to get rid of me and take over my show. Damn, he's on to us. Time to slip away. It's okay. We'll create our own show, and then we're going to be great. Get out. I love to wake him up when he's sleeping so sweetly. Get up, lazy butt. I have something for you, Arnold. You now have just 24 hours to live. I think you should Google what to do in such a situation. Yeah. First, clear your browser history. And here are the top three answers to this burning question. How would you spend the last day of your life with loved ones? I think for you, Arnold, this probably ain't the right answer. The second option is to gorge yourself on junk food. Well, you already do that every day. And finally, number three, spend the day at the ocean with a loved one. Ooh, it just got interesting. Arnold, are you really gonna do what you've been dreaming of all your life? Whoopsie daisy, somebody ran out of gas and money. money. Great idea! You can get a loan and really live it up on your last day. Get the maximum. You'll feel like the richest dude on the planet. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, makes enough money to buy a new Tesla Model S every 50 seconds. You're rich now, Arnold. You can rent your own plane and fly anywhere you want. What are you up to? Wow, you're gonna take Tagaya from her boyfriend and take her on a trip with you. Arnold, you're my hero. Ah, if only we could turn back time and make this moment really last. What if I told you it's possible to keep the day from ending? You need to overtake the sun. To do this, we gotta fly west along the equator at a speed of 1,667 kilometers per hour. If you can fly at that speed, the day will never end. Regrettably, this won't affect your lifetimer in the slightest. It's your last few seconds, Arnold. You're alive! Ah, I see. According to the contract you signed, you have no right to die until you pay off the loan. Bye-bye, yeah. Arnold. All bets are off with your luck, Arnie. All right, then. Three, two, one. Open your eyes or you'll miss everything. You only have one nanosecond. You're in Africa at 613 meters above sea level. In the vent of the seething volcano Erta Ale. Impressive, ain't it? The air temperature at the surface of the fire lake reaches 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt cast iron. Hey, chill out, Arnold. In one nanosecond, nothing's gonna happen, even with you. I mean, if you really run out of luck and stay there longer, your lungs will burst into flames at your first breath. Your skin will peel off. 
the only sensible course of action will be to plunge into the lava lake completely so that you pass out due to a pain shock and, within 90 seconds, wake up in a better place. Not much of a prospect, huh? So stay put, bud, and... Arnold, take your finger out of the lava. Oh, great. What now, Arnie? Want me to teleport you to the summit so you can enjoy the view? You hear that sound too? Arnie, get out of there! The speed of this fiery stream is one mile per hour. Hey, are you serious? And you wanted to go to Hawaii on vacation. If there's an eruption there, you won't be able to outrun the lava flow, even riding a hoverboard. Well, finally a sprinkling of something useful out of you, Arnold. Have you recuperated after the volcano? Then how about some time travel? Not too far, say about 66 million years ago. All right, you're there. Remember the time traveler's rule of thumb. Don't interfere with the lives of the locals, such as this one, for example. Otherwise, you risk changing the course of evolution of all humankind. Arnold, it's not a bear. Up with your ass and get out of here. A T-Rex can develop speeds of up to 12 miles per hour. Given your current shape, it's time for you to start praying. After all, the power of this lizard's bite is almost twice that of Megalodon, and with its muscle strength, it could easily juggle a hippo. Arnold, I warned you, look where you step. Don't run straight ahead, try zigzagging. The weight of 7 tons and the body length of 13 meters makes the T-Rex a really ungainly creature. It needs 4 seconds just to turn its body 90 degrees, so there's a head start for you. And if the dinosaur stumbles, it may seriously damage itself, not to mention that getting up is no easy task. Arnie, how about you try winning your life back from this guy in arm wrestling? Ready? Go! A Tyrannosaurus forelimb doesn't look like much relative to its whole body, but it's still up to 3 feet long, and the biceps muscle can lift a weight of 420 pounds, which is almost three times the weight of your entire body. There is one finer point, though. T-Rex can't rotate or flex its arms, so with the right technique, you have every chance to win. Come on, Arnie, show that beast who's the king of dinosaurs here. Sorry, but it seems like your vacation will have to be postponed. Elon Musk's spaceship has crashed. Another failure after the disastrous launch of the Cybertruck. He really wants to colonize Mars. Elon Musk has managed to dehydrate people and pack them into capsules. Look, it works like instant noodles. Just add water. On board, there were 67.5 billion capsules, so now there will be 10 times as many dumbasses on Earth. But this isn't your problem. Although, actually, it probably is your problem as well now. With so many people, they can't all be provided with transport. It's faster to walk. Each person on the planet produces about 0.75 kilograms of garbage every day. So, more than 200 trillion tons of garbage per year. This is enough to completely fill about 99 Grand Canyons. Power plants are being built everywhere because 75 billion people consume about 125 billion kilowatts per day. This amount of electricity is enough to charge 8 trillion iPhones. But this also means emitting huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. You don't need to be a genius to realize just how seriously this will affect the climate. Free space is in short supply. So here are your new roommates. Only men. Reproduction is strictly prohibited by law under penalty of death. This world definitely doesn't need any little Arnold Rugrats running around. Although, you were unlucky with women anyway. By the way, you hungry? You want to eat something? All food is now synthetic and recycled. You just tasted a recycled toilet paper patty. I cooked it just for you, like pearls before swine. Anyway, you still have to spend the night in this corner. Due to the increase in CO2, all the glaciers have melted and flooded 35% of the land. Given the agricultural needs of people for food, less than 1% of land is left for housing. Now, only rich people can afford to sleep with their legs extended. 
Damn, Arnold, I envy such a shorty like you. 